everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Model Building Start to Finish. This is John sitting with Dan. And I believe we finished the end detail on this SP boxcar. Right. And that means this week we're doing the side detail. Right. All right. Well, let's get cooking. Okay. Dan, this looks strangely familiar. Yeah. Just like last week. Exactly. Um, only this time we're going to be cutting out the taller ladders, and I'm using the silver spruce since he's going the side where the car is silver. Um, and again, I'm going to make some other cuts just to relieve stress on the parts so that I don't hopefully break anything. The idea is I want these thick parts of the sprue to be able to flex while I'm cutting out the ladders so that they don't crush these delicate pieces in the middle. Right. And those are delicate. I mean, those are very thin plastic. Right. Because if you just cut them like here, it might work, but there's a possibility that because you're, you're squeezing this together, this could buckle. Yeah. And that's really thin. Do you know if anybody makes a very small serrated blade that you could use for that? Like an um, ultra thin hacksaw or something? I think they do make like a, some kind of a blade for hobby knives that has serrations in it. Kind of mm. like a little mini razor saw. Yeah, that's I what I was thinking. I don't know how that would work. I've never tried that. Um, I think if it was sharp enough, it would probably work fine. Yeah. this You can use a hobby knife for this too. In fact, I may have to because I'm not getting the <laughs> cutters yeah. in here. Yeah. So I think I'm going to have to switch over. Got to be careful with the knife too, though, right? Because you can just as easily, unless you have a nice, fresh, new, sharp blade, I guess. Yeah, well, this one is pretty fresh. Yeah. But I, I don't, you just have to be really careful. Is that the one I saw you picking your teeth with earlier? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so the side ladder fits in the little holes on the side. And because of the spacing of the holes and the pins, it'll only fit on one way. So if you put it on upside down, the middle pins won't go in because the distance here is slightly shorter than the distance here. You know, it's ironic because it, the ladder looks the same in both directions. So It does almost, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's designed to just fit one way in. Well, again, if you can idiot-proof something like this, it's a good idea because someone like me might try to put it together. Do you know what I'd do, though, Dan? I'd be the guy drilling new holes, you know, and, and cursing the manufacturer for putting the holes in the wrong place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't... One thing I found with kits is it, it it never pays to force it. Yeah. So now I'm using some liquid styrene cement. Just touch a tiny amount where the little pins on the ladder are. It's kind of neat when it gets to this stage because you can really see how it's going to look when it's, you know, finished. So now I'm going to work on the side grab irons. These are pretty much the same as the ones I put on the ends. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, the only difference is is that I have to get four out of five of these off of here without breaking them because we need four of them. Oh, they actually put extras on there or an extra? Yeah, there's one extra. Okay, um, yeah. The other, the other sprue had um, five and I only needed two, so they give me a little more margin for error. But I'm going to cut them in between first. Like that. Yeah, for the same reason, right? Reducing right. Reducing the stress on the piece. Right, because then hopefully when I cut it here, it won't crush the part. Because otherwise what, what can happen, again, as I was saying before, um, these cutters are going to put some stress on the plastic when they're cutting through it, and it's going to push it together, and this middle piece here is really fragile. Mm -hmm. So... It's really easy to break. See, that way it can just cut it off. And because these are loose, this isn't causing any crushing to happen on this part. It's using physics. Right. So the little grabs go in the holes on the other side, or the other end, I should say. They look kind of thick. Yeah, it... I suppose you could replace these with aftermarket parts, but I'm just going to use these. I'm not saying that they look bad, because they don't look bad. 
they just look thick. I'm, I'm used to seeing on your models the little wire, bent wire ones, you know? Yeah. Here's some more liquid styrene cement. It's it's harder on these because of the little brackets. Yeah. So it would be a, quite a bit of work to fabricate something like this. Whoops. Do, do you know if anybody makes a kit of aftermarket uh, brass or something? I don't know about brass. I know that Katie makes some um, in a kind of... Uh, more durable plastic that's flexible. Uh, I don't know if they make them in silver. You might have to paint them. I also don't know if they'd fit without modification, but that would be a possibility. So the kit comes with two different styles of doors. And as I mentioned on a previous episode, this car isn't really accurate exactly. It's close, but not exactly right for what it's supposed to be. These doors are closer to the, what's in the photos that I see than these. Right. Um, they really should have a sl two slightly thicker bands running through the middle than are on these, but they're fairly close, and this, this is what I have to work with, so I'm going to use these. Okay. And have to cut these out. Don't have to be quite as careful with these because they're a little thicker. Yeah, I, I was going to I'm going to get the cutters that. on these. I was going to say yeah. that, though, because they are thick. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to use a knife on these because the, the, this is too thick to get. Can't get in there with these. Well, good thing. Good it. thing you have the knife here. Yeah. So what I'm actually gonna do? I'm just gonna improvise and use this little piece of plastic as a cutting board. I'm turning this over because this side has these big projections. Yes. And if you if you try to press up here, you might stress the parts. Oh right. A lot. But if doing it here, it's fairly flat, so I'm not going to put as much stress on the parts. So I'm just going to cut them. So it seems to me like no matter what kind of parts you're cutting off of a tree or sprue or whatever you call these things, uh, you really do just want to think of a way that will put the least amount of stress on the parts as possible, You know, even regardless of what kind of part it is, right? Right. Because you don't want to break it. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to have to do some cleanup because it's left some things on the, you know, yeah, on the side. Big, big things. So I'm going to just kind of gently shave them off. In addition to the knife, you can also use a big flat file to smooth out the edges. So let me get this right, though. You you did shave it with the knife first, right? Right to get the most of it off. Uh -huh. But then I can finish it up with the file. And the reason I'm using a big file is because it's nice and flat and it won't make the door edge all, you know, yeah. weird. Yeah. It'll keep it flat. Got it. So you're fine-tuning, you're fine-tuning. Right. Now I need to actually attach the doors and basically just stick them on. I want them to be inside the door track and then there's a little lip here and just push it all the way closed assuming you want it in the closed position like I do. Right. And then what I'm going to do is glue it from the inside. I've turned the car around, and I'm holding the door in place with my thumb, and then I can just get my brush with some liquid cement and hit the seams from the inside of the car. Yeah, seems like, that'll, seems like that will be a very solid connection there. Yeah, it should be. Okay, so there's a few more details to add to the sides. We have tack boards and the stirrups. So I'm going to cut those out now. So I seem to recall tack boards being on the doors usually, right? Yeah, they're they're on the door. Um, there's some on the ends, but we already did those last time. Right, right. And there's also these little ones. The doors have a big one and a little one. So wh what do they do? Wh what's the tack board for? Was this some kind of labeling thing where they'd put something on it? Or? Um, yeah, I think they could like stick um, paper on there to information about what was in the car or whatever. Well, they would probably use tacks, right? Otherwise, it wouldn't be called a tack board. Yeah. Huh? Now this, I'm going to have to be real careful with these stirrups, too, because... They look pretty thin. Yeah, they are. Well, I've seen stirrups on some of your other cars that are thinner, though. Yeah, these are um, plastic. I mean, you, you could replace these with aftermarket ones. I think these look good enough, I'm going to use them. Mm -hmm. But, um, 
yeah, you certainly could use aftermarket stirrups if you wanted to. Even though the car isn't 100% right, I'm still using photos as a reference. And the larger tack board goes about here. So I'm going to glue it on with some... Whoops, I moved it. I'll tack it on a little bit on one side, and then I can finalize the position before I glue it. One thing to keep in mind is that tack boards, even on the same car, sometimes were repositioned over time. So it kind of depends on what era you're modeling. Yeah, and you know, it's it's kind of weird that you're having to basically estimate a tack board position for a not really prototypically accurate car, but you're still using photos to make the best guess of what it would be right. if it were, right? Well, I want this to be basically a good stand-in car. It is fairly close to the prototype. It's just not 100%. Yeah. You have to be a little careful because these have a left and a right. Or basically, they're, they're supposed to go one, one way. So there's like two that go one way and two that go the other way. Yeah. There's basically like a flat side and then... An angled side, right? Well, I, the I, back side of it has these little mold rings in it. Oh. So you want to put the flat side to the flat side inside the car, and then you glue it. Okay. So I'm going to hold that there and then glue it with some liquid styrene cement. The liquid styrene cement is getting a workout this time. Yeah. So here's the other side. Again, I'm putting the flat side against the flat side on the car. So are there pretty reasonably good instructions or diagrams in the instructions to show you the orientation for this? Yeah, there's an exploded drawing, although it's kind of hard to tell because it's they're drawn so small. But if you just really look at the part, you'll kind of see how it's supposed to go. Because also the, the stirrups stick out a little bit on the outside, uh -huh. And they don't on the inside, so and they kind of you want the sticky outy part to go toward the outside of the car. Yeah, so it's kind of it's almost like putting together a puzzle, sort of. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, but with glue. <laughs> right. <laughs> now it's time to put the roof on, and this actually fits pretty well. I'm kind of spreading the car and putting it in from one end, and then just kind of sliding it into place. Yeah, I thought I noticed that the sides of the car looked like they were bowing in just a little bit. Is that they, why you're having to do that? Yeah, they do just a little bit, so it makes it a little easier. And now it's pretty much on there. I probably could even just leave it like that, but I'm going to go ahead and tack glue it um, with some liquid styrene cement. Yeah, now, is that liquid styrene cement easy enough if you ever needed to take the, the roof off for some reason? Is it easy enough to pry off, or is it... Um, is it a really strong weld? It's pretty strong glue once it's once it's set, but I'm I'm only using a little bit of it. Yeah. Um in case I ever do need to take the roof off. Although I can't imagine what you would need to take the roof off for. I mean, really, you've got your weight in there. You know, I mean, everything's pretty much set now. The only thing I could think is if for some reason the weights came loose. Yeah, but that's why you use the stick-on weights, isn't it? Yeah, it shouldn't happen, hopefully. But, um, you, you know, never, yeah, you never know, Dan. You never know. Well, Dan, it's really starting to come together. Yeah. And in fact, at this point, it's getting really close to being finished. Um, most of what I want to do now is going to be either aftermarket or fabricated details. Okay. So I think this is a good place to stop for this week. All right. I guess we'll do that then. What should we expect to see next time? Put on the roof walk, that would be a photo etched part. I'm going to make some uncoupling levers and I'm going to add some uh, train line air hoses. Okay, so really all that's left on the model is just fine detailing and I guess weathering. Right. Okay, right. cool. We'll catch everybody next time on our next episode of Model Building Start to Finish. Thanks for watching.